Welcome to Gaming Top Down. Today we're going to be unboxing Pagan Fate of Roanoke, I think it's pronounced. This is a two-player card game from Capstone Games where one player plays as a witch hunter trying to discover which of the suspects is the actual witch and the other player is playing as a witch trying to keep that witch hidden. That was a lot of witches, but let's go down to the table and see what's inside this box. <laughs> Okay, zoomed in here on the box, you can see it has this cool like spot treatment on a lot of the like art here on the two characters and the title of the game. The game was designed by Casper Kier Christiansen and Corey Werner Storgard, and the arts by Marin Goot. Um, very, very cool art in this game. Here is the back of the box. Uh, you can see it's a two player game, 14 plus. Plays in 60 plus minutes, whatever that means. A little more than an hour, it seems. Uh, so let's open this box up. Okay. First up is the rule book, like usual. So let's open that up and see what it looks like inside. Again, just really awesome artwork. Look at that introduction page. So cool. Component overview, game setup, playing the game, cards, villagers, sucks, uh, excuse me, suspects, hunter cards, witch cards, the boards, witch board and the hunter board. Actions, which actions, common board actions. I hope you can see this okay. I'm really zoomed in. Um, so hopefully that uh, still looks clear. Hunter actions, example of play, example of some turns, advanced rules. Oh man. Faction and scenario cards. Hmm. Starter deck variations. And deck building, if you have any of the expansions, I believe. Which I don't at this point. Glossary. Kickstarter backers. Thank you to them. Community baby. Cute. Uh, action heroes. Sponsored pets. Expand the possibilities with some extra content. Publisher. And art on the back. All right, cool looking uh, instruction manual. Okay, here are the two boards for the two different players. Here's the witch board. What's on the back? Just some uh, cool artwork. And on the front, you've got spots here for, I think it's either like a completed potion or ingredients that are gonna go into like a cauldron there. And then at the bottom, if I remember correctly, you kind of have some animal ability companions. I haven't read the rule book fully yet, but I did watch a brief playthrough. So um, some cards go there. The hunter has a similar board with uh, different sections here where they're trying to figure out which of the hunters that or excuse me, which of the. Uh, kind of suspects in this row of cards between the two players is the actual witch and is placing cards here in order to do that. So those are those two boards. We've got one set of punch outs for the different tokens for the two players. Those look pretty straightforward. They're, uh, I don't know, they're not the highest level of quality, but they feel just fine. I actually have the uh, wooden component set coming um, in the next few weeks, so that'll be fun to replace those with, but even if you don't, those look just, just fine. There are a couple of dials, one for the witch character, one for the hunter. Looks like they go from zero to 20. It's like both of them do, yeah, 0 to 20. Those are uh, cool and pre-built for you. Then we've got a deck of cards, two decks, excuse me, probably one for each player, a couple of baggies. And we'll look at those cards in just a second to kind of end the uh, unboxing here. The Hunter has a player aid, which is nice. It's an actual like big uh, punch board piece so they can set that next to their board the witch also has one 
Um, this kind of goes off to the side of the main board here. And this middle set of boards here kind of makes the board that goes between the two players. It probably gets set up in a better fashion than this. Let's see, where's the R? R is here. R O A N O K E. And then this. Nope, I think it goes this way. Yeah, just kind of like that. And those suspect cards will kind of go there. So we've got the two different decks here. I'm going to open them up real quick and we'll finish this by looking at those packs of cards. Like I mentioned, this is a uh, two player card game where these decks of cards are the primary kind of important piece. But there are some expansions you can get. And when you get those extra cards, then you can start building custom decks where I think they have to have 50 cards and you can only have two cards of each or no more than two of the same card in your deck. So if you want to get into that kind of deck building, you can, or you can just kind of play the game with the uh, preset decks, which is what I will be doing for the first many plays. And then uh, I'll see if it, if I like the game enough to continue. So let's uh, look at this deck first, which I imagine is the, uh, good question. Which one is it? There is this one and this one. This is probably the witch deck. Uh, I would think this looks more like a solo kind of witch hunter kind of image. And we've got a bunch of cards here. And I think they do have the symbol from the witch hunters board on them. Yes, right here. So I think those are like allies or something. Again, need to read the rule book, but let's look through these. We've got native guide, clerk, preacher, operative, thug, scholar, bribe, combine information, rapid decay on the trail, ransack. I don't know if reading all these is super important, but I'm going to. So there you go. Random tidings, gossip, lockdown. Quarantine, house arrest, persuasion, supervision, harsh treatment, main hall, headquarters, study, village center, message board, armory, and some more copies of those ally cards, thug, scholar, and then looks like the same. So there's two of each of those cards we just went through. What did I end on? The armory. Study, Village Center, Message Board, Armory. Then these ones look unique. Flag Flagon? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Of Oblivion. Merge with Familiar. A blend of Nature. Potion of Knowledge. Surplus Elixir. Jar of Glibness. Blood Money. Conjuration. Discredit. These seem like uh, these would be the witch cards. Now I'm all kinds of confused. I don't know. Misdirection, pyrokinesis, suggestion, and allure. And let's just check here in the rule book really quick to see which deck we just uh, looked at. That was the uh, witch deck, actually. The hunter deck looks like... Oh, okay. So that's why I was confused. There are these cards. First, that are, I'm guessing, those characters, yes, that go in these middle sections here. And then we have, and more of them. Okay, I feel like I uh, went through two different sections of deck here. So let's actually flip those back. Yes, I did. So some of those were the Hunter cards. They were probably all of them until we got to the potions and stuff. <clears throat> Which would make sense because that seems much more like a witch. Yeah, character item. So all of those ally cards and things like that were the Witch Hunter's deck. And then these are the Witch portion of the Witch deck with um, these different spells and 
parts of those uh, ingredients that you're putting in the cauldron. Okay, so we looked at those really quick. Let's just separate these by the backside here or else I'll mess that up again. Okay, there are some of those. We've got a couple scenarios, interesting, and a couple player aids. And a couple, hmm, what are these? The stout cards that I guess explain what those nine characters in the middle of the board do. The caretakers, the voluntary recluses, recluses, and the stout. Okay, and some player aids. We'll put those off to the side. And then we have the rest of the witch deck. Okay, so we'll look at the rest of the witch deck last. Here are some more of those characters. These ones all have a white back and don't seem to have this ability symbol at the bottom. Um, so we'll just look at those like this. Mayor Biggs, Native Pamvi, Widow Atkins, Stranger Sue, Preacher Wolfric, Bo Johnson, Dr. Annie, Hunter Adams, and Nestling Mia. This is probably the deck that the witch uses to determine which one for that game will be the actual witch character. Whereas these ones are probably the ones that go out on the board. They've got the different uh, colored backs. And then they have a uh, special ability here at the bottom. So we'll just flip through those real quick so you can see what those abilities are. Sorry for the disarray in the uh, order I showed you these cards, but there are those. And then last up, we have the rest of the witch deck. Got Entranced, Hypnotism, Obscuring Mist, Tardiness, Witch's Mark, Isolation, Assist, False Lead. That card feels like it has another stuck to it. It doesn't. Uh, gather, Learn Secrets, Qualm, Scry. And then we're back to uh, some of these that we've already seen. So there's two of these in the deck. Blend of Nature, Potion of Knowledge, Surplus, Elixir, Jar of Glibness. I think we saw all of those then. Blood Money. And we saw these two. Conjuration, Discredit, Misdirection, Suggestion, Allure, Entranced, Hypnotism, Tardiness, Witch's Mark, Assist, False Lead, Gather, Learn Secrets, Qualm, and Scry. So there's basically two copies of a bunch of cards, probably 25 cards in each deck, since I think both decks are 50 cards. Okay, well that is everything that comes in the box when you get the base game of Pagan Fate of Roanoke. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have played this one yet, or even what your favorite two-player card games are. This is a, a genre of game that I really enjoy. Um, thanks so much for watching this unboxing, and I will see you on the next one. Till then, bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. As most of you know, gaming top-down is an independent endeavor. I don't accept money from publishers for previews or opinion-related content. But there are a few ways that you can support the channel and help me keep the lights on. Liking this video and subscribing to the channel helps me to grow. If you're thinking of getting a game that I covered in this video, please click the affiliate link in the description of this video. It helps to support me and doesn't add any cost to your purchase. I also do a weekly gaming podcast where I talk about the board games that I'm playing along with my brother. You can check that out on Apple's podcasts and on Spotify. And you can also get that podcast three days early over on our Patreon. You can follow the Patreon at patreon.com slash supergamebrothers completely for free. But if you do support us over there, you get some extra perks like being able to write into the show, getting early access to the show, voting on the games that I'm going to cover and review, and lots of other fun stuff. Thanks so much for your support, for liking and commenting on my videos. You really are what helped keep the lights on for me. Thank you.